That perspective, uh, a lot of it's been based on character and, and, and just the approach we have on a daily basis uh, to, to not only make us better people but better players because I know this, the better people are, the better players we are. You talk a lot during the summer and, and during the offseason about getting back to the way things were and changing the culture here. Do you have a handle on how that has gone, getting ready to actually start practicing? Because I know you want to do a lot of things off the court, but now transition that to being on the court. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think the one thing with this group, because you, you can't forget, we were very, very young last year, and we're still extremely young this year. And, you know, taking the offseason and looking at, at what we – can do different in terms of, of orchestrating practice and, and you know maybe not doing as much early, but being really, really good at the things that we're going to deem to be as, as important as they are. And um, you know, I, I think this team is is going to be a, a team where guys are going to have roles and they're going to have to embrace the role and they're going to have to do their job every time they take the floor. Coach, who do you expect to step into? The roles of the leadership specifically. Yeah, you know, I, I think this. Um, you, you look at your your core of, of Mark being a senior, um, Jay Sean, um, Cam, uh, Kata. Those guys have been in the program the longest, and you, you hope that they sort of uh, are the ones that, that step forward. You know, I, I've been very very pleased with the freshmen, but they still don't know. What's, what's coming down the pipe. They, they don't get yet, and, and they won't until we sort of go through it. So I think with, with those four guys, um, you know, you're, you're hoping, and, and Jake, Juan, Trevor have, have kind of been through things. So uh, it's, it's going to have to be probably more of a committee-type leadership than it is just one certain guy stepping forward. I think Cam mentioned he saw that this team is a little more mature. I mean, would you say this, this team is a little more mature than last year's? I, I definitely would. I think just from the, the, the standpoint of um, sort of how workouts have gone, um, you know, the, the academic side of things, and um, you know, and we're a little bit older, and, and, and I think that definitely helps in, in terms of those guys doing the best they can to exemplify what we want Buckeye to be in terms of, of who we are and what we are. About last year, you talked about how many roles you had to figure out, and you just talked about guys have to grab the roles and embrace them this year. Do you think you have the same number of questions about this team as you did last year, or do you think you have a few more answers? I, I think we have a few more answers because I think anytime you lose five seniors off the team and you lose the best guard in the country as the number two pick in, in the, the draft, um, there's going to be some, some voids, there's going to be some unanswered questions where a lot of these guys played significant minutes. I mean, you know, statistically, the top six guys are back from last year. And I think that's a pretty good nuclear to us in today's day and age of college basketball to have six guys back, at, especially at this level, um, that have been a part of something. Everybody full go and good to go when you guys start on Sunday? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I mean, we, we've had our nicks and knacks, and, and, um, but, but nothing, nothing too major. Do you guys have to take it easy on Jay Sean at all? You, I mean, just maybe not subjecting to quite as much pounding given his size and where he plays, or do yeah. you do anything differently with him this year? You know, it's, it's funny you ask that because I, I read an interesting thing this summer about uh, certain types of players, and as, as a coach, you fall in love with those guys who compete to get a drink of water. They compete to uh, be the first guy to get the ball off the rack, and sometimes you, you're you don't mentally think about the, the pounding that, that maybe he's taking. And, and you know, a lot of Aaron Kraft was that way. Uh, Jay Sean's a little bit like that. So I, I think, you know, you can't take him out of something because he, he likes the competition. But just sort of being more cognitive in terms of what uh, his body's going through could probably be a good thing for us. Coach, how have the guys adapted to Chris Jensen and what he's kind of brought uh, energy-wise? Yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, from the get-go, uh, you know, because Chris was involved in recruiting some of these guys. And um, that would be two years, three years he's been gone. And, um, you know, I, I think that they like his intensity. They like um, the, the fact that, hey, he's, he's in there trying to make them better. And uh, if, if they don't want to work, then they'll get kicked out of the gym and he'll work on his own game. Somebody, somebody's going to get better. Uh, and, and so they, they've come to adapt to that. But I, I think that, you know, just his... his 
worldly knowledge in terms of the game of basketball. And, and not only from his time here, we final four elite eight in the two years he was here. Um, you know, you look at, at where he's been, who he's coached, and, and that sort of thing. So I think there's there's obviously a, a respect level that is, is very very high. What is your explanation for not wearing the jersey that you were wearing earlier to the TBA? Micah had to borrow. It. Okay. That was that was the day. Did you just do that to kind of give the guys a laugh? Because Kim said when he saw the photo, he was crying. <laughs> no, what happened was I was going to change to work out and. David and Kyle had the uniform laying on the floor, and I said, you know, it looks a little bit better if somebody's in it. And they said, well, no kidding, the guys aren't here yet. I said, well, give it here, I'll put it on, not thinking anything was going to happen. And truth be told, that's my one time that I always wanted to play in the Big Ten. I wasn't good enough, and for about a four-minute stretch there, I felt like a dream had come true. Cam said he's never seen you with, like, no sleeves on. He was, like, surprised that you're also muscle definition. Well, I mean, you know, it was... <laughs> Sometimes I give a little gun show. Uh, no, I, you know, 49 years old, man, it's, it gets hard. Yeah. Hey, Thad, when you all finished uh, last season, you obviously went to meetings with everybody. Um, there were discussions about what everybody individually needs to do. Was there a universal message with every player and every coach about what had to change what you wanted to see no, I, I think, in, in, in my opinion, or not my opinion, but uh, the, the, the biggest message was we're, we're going to fight for our culture every single day. And, and um, from, from the littlest of things, there's, there's going to be a, a, a demand of, of uh, we're, we're not going to take anything for granted. We're, we're not going to, uh, we, we feel like we know what it takes to win here. And, and I think we've got the type of guys that are, are willing to do that. And, um, you know, I, I think that was probably the, the, the biggest thing. We, we knew we were going to have some turnover. And uh, we were perfectly fine with that. But I, I think uh, for us, it was getting established, getting the new guys in here. Let's, let's, let's get the role going in terms of, of what we want to be about and how we want to play and, and, and those types of things was, was probably the biggest message. In terms of physical development, uh, skill set development, are there a couple of things that stood out to you as they got back in the summer and got back into work here that stood out to you as that's a real change? Somebody developed their game uh, you know, physically, mm -hmm. obviously, Jayshon's healing. Right. Uh, things like that that stood out to you? Um, yeah, I, I'll be honest. I, I was, a couple things stood out. I, I thought that uh, um, like Cam, Kata, and, and Mark were, were playing at a very high level uh, this summer and the things that we were doing and, and you know, almost like the light had maybe gone on in terms of, of uh, them starting to get what it takes to be the players that they want to be and, and we need them to be. Um, you know, I, I think Jay Sean being out, I don't even view that as a bad thing in terms of him resting his body and getting completely healed so you know, hopefully we, we start on Sunday and he's 100%. I don't think he's in the best shape he can possibly be in, but, but that's understandable. What was the hardest adjustment for Mark getting into college basketball and playing the big time at this level? Yeah, I, I think that it, it was the uh, just the everyday uh, grind of, of having him to bring it day after day after day after day. Uh, and, and knowing that at this level from high school, if you take a day off, you take a game off, you're, you're going backwards, and then now you're playing catch up. And, uh, and I, I think constantly keeping the foot on the gas is something he's probably fun. You said you saw the light come down a little bit. Was there anything that he added to his game, or is it mostly just mental? Um, you know, knock on wood, he's shot the heck out of basketball, and he's just he's been a lot more patient um, in, in, in terms of his offensive. Demeanor. There's there's more patience. There's more reading. He's, he's not uh, over penetrating, or he's not. He's slowing down a little bit and sort of letting things develop, which to me is a sign of a, of a senior way of wanting to play. He's one of those tweener guys. Is there any specific role that you have in mind that you kind of like that he's a role? Player? I, I do. I, I like the fact that we've got a lot of guys like him um, in, in, in terms of what they can bring to the table. Uh, you know, basing that off matchups or, or whatever it is, but. Um, 
you know, I, I just, I, I, I like where you, the place he's in right now. You said uh, a little bit ago that... As you don't see you until, like, January 14th. I thought we were playing, I saw you in uniform, I thought we were playing pickup. Right? <laughs> you rig it. That'd be an only one on one day. <laughs> you, would, you would kill me so bad it would be awful. Um, you said, you, you were talking earlier about wanting guys to fight for the culture. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm still that. Did, does that mean, did you think you guys lost that culture somewhere along the way last year or at some point? Um, you know, it, it wasn't where I wanted it. Um, just in, in terms of, of the, the, just the daily behavior, the, the, the daily way we carried ourselves last year. I didn't like that. It was a good feel. And, and probably a lot of it I blamed on youthfulness, just just a team with no seniors, one junior. Um, and I think that was a, 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 a huge case for it. Uh, like I said, when you lose as many players as we had lost the year before, there's going to be uncertainty. There's going to be uh, uh, up and downs throughout the course of the season. And, and you know, just the, the immaturity that, that we had last season, uh, at, at certain times was something that hopefully we learned we can't have that as, as we go into this season because it can definitely cost us. When you, uh, you've been here a while, you've had a lot of success. Was this off season when you have a minute to sort of think about things for your day, a guy at your point in your career, are you doing the same things? You know, this is what we did in 2006 and it worked, we're doing the same things now. Or is there any point when you're coming off a couple of years where, you know, you guys won a bunch of Big Ten titles, you haven't won a Big Ten title mm -hmm. in a couple of years? Is there a point where you say, you know what, we got to change this. This, right. it's, you know, this worked for a while, but this is an actual yeah. change to maybe some of the basic things of how we go about our business. Yeah, absolutely. But, but I think you know, one thing I learned early on, um, when things are going well, that's when you have to change the most because you, you can't get complacent. And I think you go into to every season and you're saying, okay, what what do we feel worked? What didn't work? Now, you gotta look at your team. And, and so you gotta make the changes. Uh, but unequivocally, we're, we, we've made a lot of changes to, to what we're doing, how practice will be structured. But it, it's kind of, you know, if I had a veteran group, uh, as we did in, 12 or whatever it was. I mean, we come in here on Sunday, we'd be practicing about 900 miles an hour. Don't have that now. So there there has to be a lot more of, of uh, explaining. Teaching the why is, is one of the biggest things. I, I think with with this particular team, I mean, our, our tests have to be practice. We have to challenge these guys. In front of them. Everybody says the game's the test. No, no, no. But these guys, the test is going to be practice every day. And, and uh, you know, getting them to understand that, getting them to value uh, why we're in here and what we're doing and understanding it uh, is, is, is something that's very important to me. Matt, how do you get buy-in thrown around a lot? How do you get buy-in? What does buy-in mean to you in terms of the program? Because apparently last year, some issues with buy-in. Yeah, you know, I, I think this, it, it's one of those things, it's, it's very, very hard to explain. Um, but, but you know it when you see it. I, I think one of the biggest things in, in terms of buy-in is, is everybody coming to grips with reality and and, and, and understanding that, that we're going to go with or without you. you know, one of my all-time favorite songs by U2. And I, I think that uh, the, the buy-in comes from understanding that there, there's something far greater. No individual is going to get bigger than this team or this program. And there has to be a, a, a certain element of, of respect for the jersey, there has to be a certain element of respect for, for the, the players that have played here before us. And that to me is, is buying in. You know, are they going to buy in every day uh, and tell them to take a charge or something? No, that's a little bit hurt. It, it, to me, it's a mindset of, of understanding that we're all in this together and, and we don't want one guy that is outside the, you know, I, I read a great quote the other day. Uh, uh, 10,000 enemy on the outside of the tent is far greater than one enemy on the inside of the tent. 
and and I think that's something that is, is we have to have is, is everybody because you're not going to be always happy. You're not going to get as many shots as you want. You're not going to get as many minutes as you want. You're not going to get your number called as much as you'd like. Um, but you got to stay on the course of, of the program is bigger than me. When you answered Doug, when you answered Doug's question, you said you saw how this culture wise came to light. Last year we stood here and you talked about the young guys that were excited about the When was it that you started to notice that? When, when was. When uh, was it was it was early, uh, I'll be honest with you, because I think that, uh, you know, as I told our guys this summer, I mean, we technically we did what we were supposed to do last year. We won 11 games in the Big Ten. But our immaturity at the beginning of the season is, is probably what cost us from our eighth straight NCAA tournament. And um, not taking anything away from any of the teams that we played, but you know we just weren't as, as, as focused and mature and, and understanding the, that we weren't bought in to the level we needed to be uh, at that juncture of the season. And, and those are things that as you go back and you look and, and you say, why? And, and the buy-in, the immaturity probably just wasn't there. Can you get a sense already about how this team is handling it as opposed to last year's Yeah, no, I, I think, good. Now, we start, you know, two-a-days and, and, and all that stuff starting on Sunday. Um, we'll, we'll see just sort of how tough we are and, and uh, um, you know, you, you see guys kind of fade in and out and you say, well, he's not ready. Um, because, I, as I said, uh, we have to practice and make that our test. Do you think that can result in the guys have mentioned that there's no the excuses like, like, mentality, and I'm just wondering where they were. If that started with them and the chip on their shoulder, or if that started with you, or if that just kind of happened. Well, I think it, it probably started with me on June 6th when we had our first team meeting, and, and um, I'm glad that they heard that. That's very, very important to me. Um, but, I, but I think that they are starting to understand that, like, hey, we got a job to do. And, uh, and he's going to find the five guys. He's going to take the guys on the Burma 11th the Navy that, that want to do things the way we're doing them. And, um, you know, so that's something that, that uh, hopefully continues to be ingrained in him. I, I really don't care uh, in, in terms of what they think. We have to think a certain way. I don't need individual thoughts this year. So are there young guys that are then going to be buying from those certain spots that they need? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I, I've, I've been very pleased with, with how the young guys have, have come in here. I think that, you know, you can look and say, geez, they got five starters back or, or whatever. Uh, I think that that's it. And um, let me just get in the back seat. But I, I don't want those guys to get in the back seat. You know, I, I think the thing I like about the core of the new guys is, is they don't ask a lot of questions. They just do what they're told to do. And, and, and that, to me, is, is a step in the right direction. Matt, I know um, you have guys come back here all the time. Probably guys who are currently on the team, but just asking Japan about his relationship with Evan, and that one in particular seems like it could be important because there's a lot of parallels between those mm -hmm. two guys. Um, what do you hope, I guess, comes out of that? What do you want Japan to learn from Evan? And do you, I think they asked you before, but like, do you encourage Evan, like, hey, talk to Japan, he needs something like this? Yeah, you know, I, I think for uh, Jaquan Lyle, the, the biggest thing I'd like for him to take with, with Ev, from Evan is just his temperament and his um, uh, daily approach to getting better and and you know Evan was a very emotional kid when he got here and trying to get him to calm his, his thoughts and, and, and focus on the right things was uh, at times a, a tedious task but uh, to his credit he knew he wanted to be great and he was willing to, to listen he was willing to, to change you know I, I, as I tell these guys everybody can change it's hard but but we can do it if, if you focus in and, and want to do that. And, and um, so, and, and I don't ever have a problem with, with those guys. You know, it's, it's funny um, just to support our former players give our program and, and, and finding out just how much this means to them and how well they want us to do. Uh, I love that about this place. And Jaquan said he also leans on Jared a little bit too. Just what about anything basketball, non basketball? Just, do you see him picking up little things? Is he different? From yeah. a year ago? You know, I, I, he is. Um, he's, he's getting a little bit more consistent. Um, you know, the, the uh, understanding of sometimes singles are better than swimming for the fence every single time. And, and um, you know, getting him to think uh, like a point guard thinks in, in terms of getting everybody involved in the um, 
orchestration of, of what we're trying to do. I think, uh, you know, not letting your frustration show, uh, getting on to the next play. Those are all things that he has to continue to grow, excuse me, and expand his ability to do those things. Because I, you know, if you ask me, what's the biggest thing you're looking for? And I've told the team this, I want to know who can play through adversity. I think that's the biggest question we have right now with this group of guys is, is who can handle adversity. We had a couple of games last year that should have never have happened, but we didn't handle the adversity well. Um, Newsflash, college basketball is, is adversity at its finest when, you, when you're when you playing high-level basketball. So those are the things that I want to see guys do as we move forward here. There's some brilliant uh, <laughs>